Okay, good morning, everybody. I see that we have fewer participants this time than last time. I've also received some um, notices that some are in other meetings currently, and they, that's um, that's why they can't um, join us today. Um, but just for you know, um, we do record all of these and um, Silicale will edit the recording and publish it on our Resilience Academy YouTube channel. And that is the link as well as probably a PDF version of the slides that we will share with um, the email list so that everyone interested do still have access to these materials. Um, which I think is really important so that they can um, access them whenever they want, if this time is not suitable for them. Yeah, no worries. Um, I think we should still go through with this today. And um, yeah, so um, today's agenda, um, as last time noted, will be um, data quality standards and protocols that we in Resilience Academy have developed. And um, these are the um, standards and protocols that will, will guide the data production processes as well as data management and um, usage. So um, yeah, we have noticed that there have been, oh sorry, now you can see me. Um, that there have been a bit of lack of standards and now we have an um, answer to that need. <clears throat> yeah, and if someone will join us later, then um, I hope I can notice them. If I don't, you may also note me that there have um, some others joined us as well and let them greet us as well. Yeah, first. Sorry, yeah. I would like to hear your voices as well. And if you have a webcam, um, please turn on that as well. Yeah, um, and just tell us, how are you? Um, or what are you currently doing? Or um, have you been healthy and so on? Um, would uh, Devota, would you like to start and greet us as well? Devota, yes. Morning. Morning. My name is Devota. I'm good. How are you? I'm good as well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Franklin, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How was yeah. the day? In, uh, are you calling us from Dar es Salaam or Zanzibar or? Yes, I'm, I'm calling from Dar es Salaam. Here everything is, is good. I'm happy to be here. Thanks. Good to hear. Um, Silicale, how are you? Um, I'm good. Um, yeah, everything is um, in the plan. There's a lot of to-do list, but um, other than that, I'm healthy and fine. That's the most important, important thing. Thank you, Mr. Likale. Um, Kairia, how are you? Do you have your microphone um, on so you can unmute yourself? Okay, um, that's fine. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Good. Good. How are you? I'm okay. You're okay. That's good to hear. Have you been healthy? Yeah, yeah. Good. That's that's important. So well, thank you. Thank you. Um, Sami, would you like to greet us as well? Hello, everyone. 
up that yellow sign. I'm doing okay. You're okay. Keep yep. here. Is it okay. beautiful day in um where you're calling? Um from Morogoro, Sua. From Morogoro, okay. Good to hear. Okay, thank you everyone. It's good to hear your voices as well. Um, through this presentation, I would like to hear um, your opinions or insights about these things as well, if you have any, um, so that we can have some, some um, other expert opinions and um, just some perspective of, uh, of these things that we have developed lately. Um, yeah, let's start. I think um, Masood hasn't joined us yet. And he was supposed to give some news from CRD. Um, the main thing is that now we are um, sh shifting the um, maintenance and other issues towards more, um, more long-term um, way of working, which means that we have been discussing with uh, universities or partner universities of um, the uh, four, four Tanzanian universities and just negotiating what would be the uh, what would the long-term maintenance plan would look like and how it would be executed and this is something that we have currently been doing this is something that Masood would have a better knowledge of but he's here not, not yet so if he joins us later, then I will give uh, turn to him and he can give give some more more advice and insight of this. I see that Gideon have joined us. Welcome. I see you don't have a microphone on yet, so just uh, follow along and you can say your greetings if you manage to get your microphone on. There you go. Um, first, I will uh, give a, a bit of a background for the data quality standards and protocols. Um, I'm a little bit talking about data quality aspects, just briefly. And first, I will start with what are the most um, uh, what are the most important aspects of data quality in our context, which means data production by um, um, data producers of, for example, consultants, students, research, and so on. And um, then data manager, management of them as well, but also as for um, the data managers of the climate risk database. And um, then there will be um, other aspects such as quality standards and quality protocols, which are these like um, umbrella for the practices that data managers and data producers are taking in order to in order to meet the data quality standards. So yeah, the um, first aspect are the data quality standards themselves, which are developed by Resilience Academy. This is just a set of standards which we'll be going through today as well. And um, um, sorry, I have to. A little bit move my face. Um, and these standards are met by common practices. And the common pra practices um, are a set that can be also called as protocols. The protocols is more of a like an umbrella term for all the practices that we need to take in order to meet the quality standards. And the protocols are also provided by Resilience Academy. Uh, data quality standards and data quality protocols are the main, main guiding components when, um, when implementing all the practices to, to the groundwork and um, for the data producers and data managers to follow up. And um, the quality control is the third aspect which is a set conducted by the data managers of the climate risk database. Um, we provide separate protocols and practices for 
conducting this quality control as well. But we do also provide the protocols and practices for the quality assurance, which is actually what is conducted in the data production level. And quality assurance practices are just tasks and um, implementing the protocol into the work of data producers. These are the main, main important data quality aspects that we have in our context. Of course, there might be in, I mean, there are, there are other aspects as well, but these are the more um, important ones in, in our context. Um, second, oh, yeah, so we are today um, focusing on the first two, the standards and protocols, but uh, next time um, this online training will um, go more thoroughly, deeper into the quality control issues. But today, these first two are on the agenda. Um, data quality aspects can also be determined by other issues. Um, the most important one is the fitness for use, which is case specific. And it means that the data users evaluate if the data they are using really suits for them. And we have um, identified the most important use cases of climate risk database data, which are um, the usage of the data in urban resilience community, which means, for example, planning and planning activities. And then there are also um, the use cases of research and education. Um, of course, there might be other other use cases as well, but these are a um, good good to highlight because all of these three um, use cases um, they need quite high quality data to function properly and to really create um, planning infrastructure or such research that really is reliable because the so that the data that they are using is also reliable and of high quality. So we need to Id identify these kind of use cases as well as what the data must be like in order to use it in these kind of use cases. For sure, there are other cases as well, as I said. Um, for example, um, in organization level or like volunteer level or maybe some um, um, private sector level. But yeah, these are the three that we have especially um, identified. And um, to prompt the fitness for use, we on our behalf have tried to um, secure that the data is really qualified to work in these kind of use cases, which means that we are, um, have, I mean, which, which means that we have developed the data quality standards and they really are um, implemented in the work of data producers and data managers. Um, the second um, way the quality aspects can be determined by are quality indicators. Um, there are a lot of quality indicators in the context of geospatial data, but the most, most commonly used and more, most frequently appeared in research and in um, scientific literature are the four that I have uh, uh, lifted up here which are precision, accuracy, consistency, and completeness. And all of these indicators can be um, evaluated through different dimensions of geospatial data, which are um, geometric, thematic, and temporal quality. 
And these quality indicators are included in data quality standards that we have developed. Um, and of course, these quality indicators are also evaluated by the data managers of Climate Risk Database so that they can just um, check that the data really, really meets the standards by going through all the, all the quality indicators um, that which are tied, tied to a, uh, a standard. Um, before I move on to the standards, I would like to ask if you have any insights about these, for example, with the um, use cases, do you in identify some other use cases um, on top of the urban planning, research and education? Or do you have some other questions or comments regarding these issues? If you have, please just um, unmute yourself. Okay, uh, after the next section, I would like to hear your comments after the standard section. And um, then I could ask, ask um, individually uh, your insights about them, if you have any, because the next session, section is the more important one in this lecture. Sorry. And these are the data quality standards. Um, we have uh, identified 10 themes of data quality standards and below them are um, one to four um, individual um, standards. Yes, as if you didn't notice, Silica Le said in the chat that you can also write question or comments in the chat box if you if you would like. Um, yeah, so I will just briefly go through the standards and give a little bit of explanation of what they mean. And um, then I would like to hear your comments as well. That's just comments of if we have um, produced some sensible standards at all. The first and most important one that we have identified is the metadata, metadata standard, which just means that all the, all the data sets um, must have metadata. All compulsory metadata must be filled in according to instructions and provided together with the data set. Um, we, pro we provide instructions of how to produce the metadata. I'm sure many of you have probably um, seen the metadata instruction as already, which follows the same structure as some international metadata standards, and they are also implemented in the GeoNode platform. So the metadata structure just follows, follows the uh, international standard. And um, yeah, it must be provided with all the data set. This is very important. Um, the next one, the next theme is geometric quality which um, is very important as well when it comes to geospatial data. And um, all the um, data sets must have high quality of spatial geometry. This in such is quite vague, but um, since we have um, so many different kind of data sets, we cannot specifically provide any indicators such as give any error rates or very specific um, pre precision numbers or anything like that. So we have to just um, leave all that to ev evaluate by the um, data producers themselves, but al also um, to evaluate by the data managers of climate risk database. But we emphasize that the spatial geometry must be of high quality, which includes, for example, the good vector topology and um, accurate and precise position of objects. For example, a digitized 
building must really be in a position or a location where there is a physical building in the reality as well. And data must be collected appropriately is um, one aspect of geometric quality as well. And these are also very case specific. Um, for example, road data is collected differently than drainage data or some other um, water related vector data. So yeah, these things are something that the data providers must themselves as well just evaluate and know the, know the uh, best practices in their field. The third one is attribute quality. Um, this holds three different um, aspects or standards below it. And um, the first one is that attributes and values really reflect the real world accurately. But also the attribute tables of vector data sets must be complete and consistent. There have been some data sets in climate risk database where attribute tables have a lot of gaps and empty rows and empty um, columns, which is always something that we emphasize that those kind of things doesn't um, enhance the quality of the data. Um, the third one is that all comp comp compulsory attribute metadata must be filled ac accordingly. And also for this, instructions is provided by Resilience Academy. And um, I'm, I think that most of you have also noticed that in climate risk database, there is a section for attribute metadata to given um, together with vector data set and that is the structure also that determines the um, form of attribute metadata that the data providers um, should provide together with the data set. So many of these things are determined by the platform GeoNode and um, existing, existing issues. Um, the fourth one is temporal quality, um, which is something that have also been missing quite a lot of times in the data sets. And this is just, um, this is very important for, especially for um, risk identification or planning and research, because they just, um, they need to know when the data was produced and if it has been updated or if it hasn't been up to date, updated, might there be um, a more recent version of the data available somewhere else, for example, in OpenStreetMap or some other, other um, databases. And yeah, this is something that has been lacking a bit previously. And this is something that is actually provided through metadata, but we really needed to um, I mean, we saw a need for highlighting this as well. Um, the fifth one is visual quality, um, which just means that visualizations of data sets must be appropriate, reliable and comprehensible, which means that they, the uh, visualizations must not, must not be uh, misleading or give some mis- um, misunderstandings about the data set and they are just um, very case specific again when it comes to different data sets and we trust the data providers to know the good practices in their field of visualization um, geospatial data but of course the data managers of climate risk database also contribute this and they they also advise advise the data producers how to Visualize, visualize the data sets appropriately. Um, next one is quite technical file, file format. And this has one standard below it as well, which is that all the data files must be in standardized formats. 
and machine readable. This is something that um, comes together most often, which is just it means that vector data must be in such format that it can be can be re re read in GIS software, for example, in shapefile. And metadata and attribute metadata must be provided in, for example, Excel sheets. Um, this is just um, so that the data that is produced is not provided only through, for example, maps in picture or image format, because um, that's when the data cannot be uploaded, for example, to Climatrix database. Um, next one is accessibility, which is also a very important one. Um, this means that the data sets must be shared under a license. Um, there have been some, um, I mean, some of the data sets already published doesn't have a license. Um, tied to them and that is just just um, legally a bit of um, difficult for the data users because that's if the data sets are not shared under a license then the data users are very hard to know how they can use the data and what permissions they have and since we emphasize the open accessibility um, we just um, encourage all the data producers to just to license their data under a open license. Um, then the data sets must be comprehensible in terms of, for example, language. And they also must be easy to find and easy to use. Easy to find is more um, towards the platform developers. And so that they they manage the platform so that it works and the data sets are um, easy to find from the platform but that's also from for example from browsers and if someone is looking for um, resilience type uh, resilience themed data they can overall find us um, and the final one final standard theme is responsibility this is the most um, probably vague, but it's just here to remind the data producers, data managers, as well as users, just to just to be responsible in the activities they are conducting, and take the responsibility issues into account when they are, for example, collecting data. This is just, for example, when they um, are participating local um, inhabitants to their data collection. Um, there must be some privacy issues and um, such things that must be taken into account. And um, also in the use cases, the users must, must um, be sure that the data usage doesn't harm, harm for, it, for example, the people that have have um, been part of the data collection or so on. Yeah, these are the standards that we have identified. Now I would love to hear your comments. What are, for example, the most important standards that on, in your opinion, or is there missing something perhaps? That is something important to hear as well. Um, I could um, call some names. Um, sorry, yes. So um, maybe Franklin. I know you have you are a uh, lecturer, lecturer in which university was it? RT. Um, do you have any insights about these standards that we have developed? Um, 
if not, you're welcome to um, give comments later as well. Um, or Devota, now that you have uh, heard this presentation, what do you think about the standards? Are, is there something missing or what do you think that are the most important ones? First of all, I would like to congratulate all of you for preparing these standards. For me, I think the most um, important stand standards are the metadata, uh, the file format, and the visualization, the visual quality. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really good to hear from the World Bank's view as well. What are the what are the most most important ones? So thank you very much. And yeah, these are something that we we will emphasize, especially the metadata when it comes to data production. And yeah, the visual quality. I agree as well that it's really important. Um, just to just in. Uh, accessibility and dissemination and really um, giving giving information to users and others as well. Um, would someone else like to comment something as well? Oh, I see Masood has joined us. Welcome. No problem at all. Thank you for joining us. I briefly gave, gave a uh, summary of the um, long-term maintenance planning and what is going on in the beginning. Yeah, let's move on then. I know some of you have a uh, meeting at 10, so let's see. If we um, manage to finish before that. Um, so yeah, the next one is data quality protocols. Um, so I um, explained the standards that we have, but we also need to guide how to meet the standards. And that is why we have also developed a bunch of protocols. And they include um, practices that we provide, I mean, practical tasks that can be implemented in the works of data producers or managers and platform developers as well as users. Um, but we also provide guides how to, how to implement the practices and tasks in their work. Um, so the protocols guiding the data providers um, is just to um, provide guidance of how to produce data that meets the data standards, such as how to fill a good quality metadata. We provide uh, detailed instructions of filling in the metadata and in what, what stage that should be done. And also for the other standards, we provide detailed, detailed instructions of how to, for example, take the um, geometric quality into account in the data production work, which, for example, we provide instructions of how to, um, how to check the topological quality or geometric connectivity of vector data. And for data managers of CRD, we provide um, protocols and practices of how to quality control the produced data and how to be certain it really meets the standards. And we, in practice, we provide a quality control checklist, which um, includes individual tasks of how to, how to check the data for example, how to check the quality of metadata, how to check the quality of um, attribute table, and so on. Well, we provide all the instructions, but the work 
that should be done is by the data managers of the climate risk database. Um, we also provide um, protocols of how to enhance the accessibility of the data set. The, those protocols are more, more of um, just guiding, nothing to binding, but that is something that the data managers can um, uh, come up with themselves as well. Just to, just to, for example, lift up some data, data stories and so, such that are really accessible for, for the data users and so that the data sets that are shared in climate risk database are more visible and really more accessible. And the third group is the platform developers of, and maintenance, um, which just in practice means the um, developers of the GeoNode platform. And um, uh, that includes practices of how to provide a uh, well-functioning platform that is the coring sharing the data and also how to enhance the accessibility of the shared data sets just to just to be sure that the platform is easy to understand and easy to use and it actually functions and if there are some errors they can also repair them and this is something that um, is conducted by the IT development part of the maintenance group. And um, the last, last actors are the data users. There aren't, aren't too many standards to guide the, guide the actions of the data users, but for example, the responsibility standard is something that um, we um, um, try to try to um, just how, how, how do you say it um, we just try to enhance the data users to act res responsibility res responsible when they are using the data and that is something something really important as well but of course many of these standards are something that we cannot strictly um, guide we can provide uh, instructions and guidelines but we really rely that the data um, producers managers platform developers and users also know how to act when um, they are handling a case specific data because all of the practices and standards are um, not applied as such in all all cases so um, yeah, it also means that all the actors in this um, data management life cycle are just aware of the good practices of how to handle geospatial data and the standards are just to, um, just them to notice also some important things and what we really highlight. Um, yeah, do you have some some questions or comments regarding the protocols. Um, first, I would like, like to say that we go through the protocols more thoroughly in the next ses session regarding the data manager of climate risk database. And Masood is conducting an online training for the platform, platform developers as well, where some of the practices um, are probably being um, lifted as, up as well. But yeah. Would you like to comment or question in this stage? You are free to unmute yourself. So um, whether you are any of these groups or you are an expert in the universities, um, you benefit from knowing the standards that we have so that you also um, know what kind of quality we require the data sets to be. Um, so that you also know what to expect from the data and if you are a part of data production processes as well you also know that um, what are the expectations and that not all the data is just um, I mean that all the data that are 
shared in climate risk database should have the same same level of quality and for knowing that you can also rely on the data sets if you use them um, you can also be sure what kind of quality data you will receive if you if you're using the climate risk database data and also if um, you're giving some guidance about data quality standards to anyone then um, this is also very useful useful information for you to um, have one one context where data quality standards are used so that you may share the knowledge forward as well and um, yeah even though this is quite uh, this is in our context these standards they can be applied in multiple different um, cases even outside the uh, Tanzania Urban Resilience Program and, and so on. Uh, Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, thank you for the for the for the good presentations and uh, and uh, I like that the way you contextualize the the standards uh, and uh, the way that you've explained it um, in our situation. However, I would like you to answer which kind of benchmark are we using because I know there must be some kind of uh, international standards of which each of them has different perspective, but you have to actually tailor them according to your context. So my question is uh, maybe you should, uh, it should be uh, open on kind of benchmark that you're using. I know for the European, you, uh, you have some standards of which you've been using. Uh, and they are very successful, especially in sharing geospatial data uh, across Europe. Uh, for instance, I, I, if I do remember correctly, is Inspire, is it? Yes, it is. Yes, so that is one of the one of the very successful in your in your, in your contest. So for our contest, also perhaps in in, uh, in Africa, we have different situation, different perspective, and how we handle this kind of project and how we make them to be sustainable. So my direct question is, uh, uh, which kind of benchmark are we using? And, uh, and uh, the way you have contextualized and uh, the, the culture issue, the way we work, the way we do things. And um, Silicali can know that well. The, we need to know the benchmark that we use so that we know how we tailor them according to our environment. This is my question, but I like the way that you presented and the way you contextualize according to the resilience Yeah, thank you for the question. It's really good. Um, so the main, um, as you um, said about the uh, international standards and regional standards that are very successful, um, um, since the GeoNode um, runs on the Inspire standard mainly, um, that is something that we have used in the metadata standards and attribute metadata standards. And the other standards that we have developed is, um, we haven't used any uh, direct, for example, uh, regional that are being used in Africa or um, some other, but we have used um, standards that can be found from World Bank. They have also um, some data, data standards on their, uh, on their behalf as well, which has been, um, bit of modified to our our case as well. Um, they have more of like a technical um, standards that they use, but um, they have um, these kind of safeguards which guide especially the sustainability, uh, responsibility, and accessibility. And those are those have been applied in these standards as well. Um, if you have any uh, suggestions on other other standards as well. I mean, these kind of set of standards. Um, I would love to love to hear them. Um, you can you can come up back to me with email, for example. Um, and um, yeah, thank you very much for this this insight. I hope this answered to your question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> thank you. Okay, good. Um, okay, so now we are um, 
near end. It has almost been an hour now. Um, so I will let you ask in, any questions or comments um, after this before we finish. Um, but I would like to give notice on the next online training, which is um, the practices of climate risk database data managers. And that's when we are going more thoroughly the concrete tasks and protocols and practices that um, are aimed for the data managers. These include, the, for example, the um, quality control of the data sets that are published in Climate Risk Database. And after that, there is probably going to be training for GeoNode developers in the beginning of July. And after that, it's still a bit question mark, what is the next topic? But we will come back to that later as well. And just to notice you, um, we will provide all the um, all these um, presentations in Resilience Academy YouTube channel, but I will also send these slides through email, the email list when when um, um, informing you about the next session. Okay, I think that is all from my behalf. I would now like to ask one more time if you have comments or questions now is the good time to raise them so go ahead if you have any hello Bella. yes hi masood yeah yeah good morning good. i'm sorry i was out of time actually i was thinking that session would start uh, from 10 tanzanian time but it's starting from nine Actually, we're uh, in the same time. <laughs> yeah, I had to discuss about the maintenance plan that we have from Geonet, I mean, from Sarah D in Resilience Academy team. We have already discussed and we are continuing with discussion to see how many people they will benefit from this Geonet, especially in terms of technology that we are using there. And uh, this, all of this mostly will be transferred to Tanzania, not about data, what I mean that the knowledge transfer. I mean that you create a way in such a way that developers, they will have access to GeoNode, but also the managers, they will have access to GeoNode, what they want to know. Uh, those who want to do visualization, they will get some materials and some, how, I mean, some ABC, how they can work with it through the GeoNode. And mostly it will be in Tanzanian universities. I mean, these are uh, four universities plus others that will join together with us. That's our plan that we are discussing right now. Apart from this training that we are going to discuss in starting of July for the developers, but the other things will come instead of it. And other trainings will be shared around us directly, either for this platform like here we are doing, or uh, directly uh, from university to university or oh, somehow you can invite Tanzanian people who are well known about the geonodes like uh, from the ARU, the UDZM and uh, the University, conduct internal training, how you can work with these uh, dispersal technologies. That's what we have uh, right now. And others will discuss in next uh, next presentation, which at that time we should have uh, some kind of document that's already prepared for the maintenance plan. So we share together with the uh, with community another presentation. Uh, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Masood. So yeah, this was a um, good summary of what I um, uh, tried to try to explain in the beginning. So yeah, that is something that we are currently doing. Thank you very much for the explanation a bit more thoroughly. Um, if there isn't anything else, um, we are now editing this session and sharing it through YouTube channel and I will share the slides as well. If you have any comments or questions or additional information, um, you can contact us anytime, me, Masood or Sirikale. 
Um, yeah, so I also have a next meeting starting, so I would like to um, say thank you all for participating and probably hear you next time. So thank you very much and have a good day. Okay, I will end the uh, meeting now. So yeah, okay. Bye -bye. Kitos. Kitos. <laughs>